Funding for the Trade Best Practice Series is provided by the Benjamin Moore and Company Foundation in partnership with Teach Construction and through the generous support of PDCA sponsors and members. Okay, last time we were brushing, but now let's roll. <laughs> Rollers haven't been around for forever. They started to see wide use in the 1950s. Before that, they were brushing entire walls, nay, entire buildings, by hand. A roller is way more efficient and gives more consistent coverage. Let's go over the three key parts of a roller system. There's a roller cover, the roller frame, and usually an extension pole. The roller frame holds the roller cover. The frame should hold the cover securely so it doesn't slip, but allow quick one wrap removal. Roller frames range from 4 inches to the very common 9 inches and up to big time, 18 inches. An extension pole allows a painter to, of course, roll up without climbing a ladder, but just as importantly, it allows one to roll down without bending. This help is really nice when you're painting a long commercial hallway. The roller cover is where the magic happens. While the core is usually just a plastic tube, it's the fabric that is, just like brush bristles, the subject of much laboratory research and secrecy. This is way more than fuzzy polyester. Side note, did you know the original rollers were made of lambskin? They're still available and definitely have a place in the roller arsenal. Roller covers are usually a synthetic fabric that is either woven or knitted onto the core. Woven fabric will shed fewer fibers and so are great for higher sheen paints. Knitted fabrics are more productive because they'll give better pickup and release and so are best for flat and eggshell sheens. There are many different types of roller cover fabrics and that means many different advantages to each. Greater pickup with more capacity, controlled release, durability, surface uniformity, and cleanup. Choose the cover that best allows you to balance production with the desired finish. Nap size or pile height is how thick the nap is. A 3 8 inch nap is common for smooth interior walls and a thicker 1 and quarter inch nap is better for rougher exterior surfaces. Larger naps hold more paint and so are more productive, good for large walls. But larger naps also leave more stipple. That's the textured pattern the roller leaves on the wall. Short version? If you got a smooth surface, use a shorter nap. Rough surface, use a larger nap. Then there's the width of the roller. The standard for years was 9 inches, but there are many more options now. A 4 inch roller is ideal for cutting in. A 14 inch roller is the new standard for walls for many companies. It's 50% faster in most cases. Painting floors or larger walls? An 18 inch roller will make you twice as productive. So why all the fuss about roller covers? A professional quality roller cover will perform and produce and deliver expected results. And a cheap cover won't. Cheap covers don't hold much paint. They spatter, matte quickly, don't leave a very nice finish. They'll slide off the frame or they won't come off at all. So go ahead, buy a $4 cover. Get it out of your system. Go on, I'll wait. There, feel better? You'll never do that again, will you? All right, now, back to work. Well, I think it's time to get out there and see how this is done. Let's roll. What? I thought that was good. Fine. To the field! The extension pole allows greater height. There's no need for a ladder on this ceiling when you can use a roller extension pole. Think of how much time this painter saved. Instead of using a brush and needing to move a ladder every few feet, he can finish his coat in minutes, not hours. You'll find yourself rolling on many textures and surfaces. Both a hand roller and extension pole were used on this brick exterior. Interior commercial walls are similar to residential walls. A wider roller, along with efficient reloading practices, not only gets the job done faster, but the finished product will be better. A small roller works just fine on these commercial beams. 
On commercial projects, you'll come across unusual textures like this dimple-like exterior. But you guessed it, a roller is one of many tools being used on this project. Trade best practices. Positive locking. A professional roller system includes a positive locking extension pole so the roller frame won't unscrew as you work, and a roller frame that holds the roller cover firmly and releases it when you choose. Loading the roller. Properly loading a roller cover is key to productive rolling. Just like prep work is to painting. Drag paint back up the roller tray ramp and then roll forward into the paint, making sure to completely coat the outside of the roller cover. Let the paint absorb for 30 seconds or so, then repeat. Drag back, roll forward, completely cover, let the paint absorb. Need to walk away for a few minutes? Then reload the roller to help delay drying. Rolling a wall. So your roller cover is fully loaded, flooring and furniture are protected, and the work area is clear of tripping hazards. You're good to go, right? Yep, and before we get started, it's helpful to know the goal. We want to efficiently cover a relatively large area, then come back and lay it off. Another way to put it, get a lot of paint up quickly, then focus on making it look good. So you'll see four to six rows rolled before the painter comes back to lay it off to achieve a properly painted surface. Moving steadily, the professional wants to maintain a wet edge so the new paint blends seamlessly with what was just applied. Smoothly, move the fully loaded roller to the middle of the wall and roll up to midway. It's important to roll up so you don't make a dripping mess. Now, roll down to midway, then back up to the top cut line, and then all the way down to the bottom cut line. It will not look perfect and that's okay. Remember, we're just trying to get paint on the wall. You'll be tempted to keep painting, but don't. You'll risk starving the roller, and with that, your efficiency is lost. Instead, reload the roller right now, after each row. All right, your first row. Now repeat that four more times. Three moves to load, plus five moves to apply. Load and roll, load and roll. You'll soon find an easy, steady, and super productive rhythm. After the fifth row, it's time to lay off. This time, don't reload your roller. Go back to the first row and, overlapping just a bit, roll from the top down to the bottom with light, even pressure. The objective is to evenly distribute the paint film so you achieve a PDCA properly painted surface. No misses, no heavy spots, no rope marks. After you lay off a section, it's time to reload and move right into another section. There are a couple of good to knows here. First, roller direction makes a difference. If you change the roller direction mid-wall, you will likely see that change flash through the finish. It's important to always roll consistently. Same pressure, same direction, same technique. That will give you a properly painted surface. Good to know number two, your mileage may vary. Five or more rows is fine, but it's most important to maintain a wet edge. You might consider laying off after only three rows until your work rhythm improves. Let's wind this up with a caution. A classic beginner mistake is over rolling or starving the roller. This means you've compressed the roller fibers by squeezing too much paint out of the roller cover. A starved roller cover takes longer to reload. Best to reload more frequently so you and your roller are as productive as possible. There you have it. Count your moves as you load and roll and you're on your way. My name is Keith. I'm an apprentice with SNL Painting. Uh, I became a painter after I had a desk job. I wanted something more hands-on and that's why I chose SNL Painting. As an apprentice, I've learned uh, many skills as well as using a, a spray gun and masking, preparing our job sites. In the future, as a painter, I see myself uh, hopefully running a crew, supervising, taking over big jobs. Next up, clean up and close out. Arr! Are you ready to roll, kids? 
Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you.